Okay, I've been investigating the uh, glitch that I've been having, and I've noticed a couple things. One is that the um, the data sheet shows some of the behavior as well, that it has a, a slower rise time and then a, 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 a undershoot. So it's a under damped, under damped here and over damped here. So it's just part of the, it's just part of the device. Now, uh, Texas Instrument has a nice uh, website where you can go search on product numbers and there's actual uh, application engineering help. You can post questions and the application engineer will help you. Well, somebody posed the question and they actually posted waveforms that match my waveforms exactly. So it's just part of the part. And basically the TI guy said, eh, the part's not good for you. <laughs> I mean, he just said, uh, it might not be fast enough for your application. And while that's somewhat true, uh, it was a bit misleading. So I've discovered a couple things here. Uh, let me kind of demonstrate a couple of them for you. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show you is this undershoot down here, okay? So I'm running this quite fast. This is running at 50 kilohertz, which is fast for the part. Um, if I slow down, you, you can still see this, this undershoot. It, it's not so bad on that end, it's, it's worse on this end. And as you slow way down it, yeah, it's, it's still there. So I did quite a, I did uh, figure out how to fix this, and let me show you that fix. Uh, let's see here. There, there's the fix. Um, so now I can go way up. So this is a 67 kilohertz, which is very, very fast. And while there is still a little tiny glitch down there, I have a fix for the, well, I have a band-aid for that one, I guess it is. Let me run this thing up here. Oh, I can smell this thing getting really, really hot. So yeah, so it's running at 100, this is 100 kilohertz right here. So yeah, it's it's super, super hot. I, I'm putting a lot of power in this thing too. So let me, let me kill it for a second here. Uh, this is five volts per division. So I'm putting in plus and minus 10 volts. So I'm really whacking this thing hard into 20 ohms. Um, so that uh, things are getting quite warm here. I can smell them. Um, so uh, let me dial down the voltage a bit because the everything I can demonstrate doesn't need to be this high, high of a drive condition. Uh, let me let me dial it down. There we go. So this is uh, one volt per division, and I can come down here to to, to let's say two volts per division. Yeah, that that'll that'll be better. The resistor won't get quite as hot, and I won't be smelling it. Okay. So yeah, so this is under this is undershoot condition here, and um, at high frequencies I got rid of it, but. At uh, I mean, at high drive levels, I got rid of it, but at low drive levels, it's still there. So if I go up peak to peak, you can see it. It it it's kind of the same intensity, no matter what you're uh, what you're doing here. So not a great fix, but a, a better fix. I mean, what should I say? The best fix I could find. Let's put it that way. All right. So the other thing was um, was this glitch here. Now. That was the uh, picture that uh, was sent to the application engineer. He showed, he gave uh, them a picture that looked almost identical to this one. And they basically just said, well, it's, it's, it's not fast enough for your application. I think that's just a big lie. That's just a big lie. There's a, there's a problem with this part. There's obviously a problem with this part. And uh, you can do some things to, to, to help. Um, and unfortunately, I've already put that in the circuit. So this is better than it was. Uh, believe it or not, this is better than it was. So this is uh, 40 kilohertz. Let's go to let's go to 10 kilohertz. So here's 10 kilohertz, and you can see it's uh, it's easier to see in the in this. So it's almost gone, right? It's almost gone. And if I go up here to 30 kilohertz, okay, you know, it's there. So at 20 kilohertz, it's, it's kind of gone. So there is, uh, the, spec, the part is specced at 900, uh, 900 kilohertz open bandwidth, and I have a, a gain of, of, of one right now. So I'm ex expecting to get at least half of that, at least 500, but it's just nowhere near that. So uh, I, I don't quite understand the specs well enough to know why that's still there, but I know that it's just inherent in the part and, and there's not much I can not much I can do about it, other than what I've already done. So let's talk about what have I already done to make it better. Uh, well, 
if you look at the spec, uh, let's show the spec here. Yeah, this one. Okay. So when I first read this page, uh, I saw this application circuit and I went, okay, great. And here's your input. You can add some gain to it and stuff. It's non-inverting. Okay, fine. Uh, it talks about some capacitors. I said, okay, it has a 10 microfarad and a 0.1 microfarad. And there's a, a note that says you have to have them right next to the part. I've done all of that. I put in the capacitors. I put them right next to the part. I've done all the bypassing correct. It didn't really help much of my problems, but I went ahead and put them in. Uh, the thing that that I overlooked the first time was this little was this little insignia here. Now I thought that was just the load. I thought that was just okay. It's driving that load, and you're just going to specify that load, and then you, and then that will be it. But no, this is actually a compensation. This is a. Um, it has a couple names. It's known as a snubber circuit, and it's known as external compensation. Uh, it's known as. Uh, uh, putting an external zero in the circuit and stuff. There's a bunch of names for it, but uh, it's basically you need to add a little bit to the output to calm things down. <laughs> and it's a bit obscure when they talk about it, um, but they basically say, uh, do do this. Uh, let's pick, find, find, find a picture. Okay. So they basically say, do this. Uh, put a 10 ohm resistor and a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor in there, and things will be better. And then if you're worried about it uh, having back EMF on motors and stuff, put in some protection diodes. Okay, fine. But um, this is the trick. This The 10 ohms and the 0 0.01 microfarad is the trick. And it 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 uh, you have to know a lot about open loop and closed loop and, and theory and stuff of why why that's needed in there, but but it is. And it gives you some uh, ideas here. And and it doesn't really give you doesn't really give you formulas for calculating or anything. It just says typically three ohms to a hundred ohms is good and 0 0.01 microfarads to point one microfarads is good. So it just kind of gives us hand wave and it's kind of up to you to figure it out. So um, and then it says that this 100 ohms needs to be carbon. So you don't want to have any inductance here, right? You don't, you don't, you don't want a wound uh, 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 resistor of any kind. So it says, yeah, go ahead and use carbon. Well, so I looked around and indeed, whoa, way down here, I did have some carbon resistors. So I had some 18 ohm carbon resistors. So I have two in, in parallel. So I've got nine ohms, great. And then I put a, uh, it's hard to see there. Uh, is the power off? Yeah, the power's off. I can kind of drag this up here for a second. So I have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, and there's a little bit of power going through here, so I got a nice big ceramic jobber. Uh, 0.1 microfarad and uh, some high wattage uh, carbon resistor, so I have that in there. And that did help that glitching. Uh, it did help the glitching. Mm, so uh, if you're going to build this thing, be aware that that's something you need to play with. Uh, to calm the circuit down. It's still not perfect. It's still not the perfect uh, buffer. So I'm a bit disappointed in it. Um, but for the applications that I want to use it for, it's going to be just fine. So if you're going to be driving a motor or driving something big, you don't really care about those little glitches. They're going to disappear anyway. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay. So that's what I know. Uh, and it's basically in the part and you're going to you're going to do you're going to do nothing about it. The other thing that I showed you about the undershoot thing and making that go away. All right. So let me show you. Let me show you what fixes that. Um, Okay, so this thing, a lot of times when you need to have current limiting, you need to have a, a resistor outside of the, uh, of the device. Well, this has internal monitoring of what current's coming out. 
and it, it can uh, uh, sense it inside the part. And there's a, there's a programming resistor on pin 8. Pin 8 to reference, you, uh, in my case, pin 8 to ground, you set the um, amount of maximum current where you want it to shut down. And there's a table here, so like 3 amps is uh, 17K, uh, 8 amps is 1.8K. So you, ch you change this and, you, and you'll get different, uh, different current limits. Um, well, what I found on things like a square wave is when you're driving those edges, it's actually a lot of current to generate that edge, a lot of current to generate that edge. And this circuit sees it, and this circuit tries to turn it down while it's doing that edge, and it causes that ringing. And so in order to get rid of the ringing, you basically uh, put a zero ohm resistor in there, okay? And so uh, zero ohm says that the desired current limit 10 amps is a zero ohm. So basically you have to shut off the uh, current limit function in order for this thing to have really, really sharp edges. Uh, otherwise, if you have a DC application where this thing is not whacking up and down, it's a DC application, it, then doing it this way will be fine because you don't have to worry about uh, quick edges. Or if you had a really, really slow circuit, it'd be okay to do this. But on quick edges, this is going to get you in trouble. So those are the two tricks. One to have the external uh, snubber circuit and uh, one to not use the, uh, not use the current limit. Um, so I think it's still going to be a valuable thing that I'm going to build up. Uh, I'm going to try to put this in a box sometime when I, when I find the right power supply. Um, I'm going to make it with several gain settings. Uh, so right now it just has a gain of 1. But I'll have a gain of 1, gain of 10, gain of 100 or something like that. Uh, that's switched on the outside. Uh, I'll stick in the monitor circuit so it, LED will light up if it's uh, uh, over temperature. And uh, I probably will um, put in a, a kill switch. So there's a on, let me see if I can show that here, on, yeah, um, on pin 9, pin 8 is the uh, uh, current set, on pin 9 is the E slash S uh, pin, and you can drive that with a, uh, a logic gate, and if you drive it low, it disables the output. Okay, you can also just put a switch there. You could have a mechanical switch, and I think I'll do that. Uh, make it, uh, uh, make it uh, open the output. It'll, it'll, sh it'll shut it down. So that would be a good thing to add. So this pin is used both as an input and an output. It outputs data so you can add an LED, and then it uh, as a, acts as an input if you want to enable or disable. So anyway, it's kind of a little bit a little bit strange in that regard. And it's quite low current. It can't really drive the LED itself. I think it outputs something like 50 microamps or something. So you have to have some type of uh, CMOS logic around there to, to send those signals. Here's an example of it being used to drive an LED. So there's an, a 74HCT04 part in here. And so 74HC series part and um, then a 250 ohm resistor in an LED. So the, the uh, uh, LED is buffered. So you have a very high impedance into the, uh, into the CMOS gate. So you, you actually have to do something like this to make it work. All right, let's give it a let's give it a torture test here. I've hooked up a motor, so this is a, a geared motor, but uh, you can see that it's uh, it's got quite a bit of torque. It's uh, rattling back and forth as I put through a uh, a, a, a wave into it. So this is the uh, the signal I'm putting into. It's plus and minus ten volts, and uh, I guess this is really what we're interested in. It looks pretty clean. Uh, at low uh, low frequencies, there's no glitch or anything. It's very very nice at low at low frequencies, and it's uh, it, it delivers a lot of current. So that's good. Let's go ahead and speed this thing up a bit. We're running at uh, 3.75 hertz. There we go, six hertz. Starting to whack a whacka, <laughs> and we're still looking good over here. So, 
Let's uh, bump it up. Uh, let's see. Oops, went too far. Okay, there's a. Uh, there's nine hertz. Yeah. What is that? That's twelve hertz. Still looking perfect over here. I think that's a pretty uh, drastic wave to put into it. Let's put it a square wave. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. <laughs> yeah, now we're talking. So let's uh, see how fast we can go with this thing. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, uh, you can hear the trash collector outside. So we do have some uh, spikes happening now for the back EMF from the motor. And here I've, I've changed it to a triangle wave. We're still at 50 hertz. And motor's nice and, motor's pretty quiet. Now if you feel it, you can hit, feel it vibrate, but, uh, uh, motor's getting warm. Yeah, I like it. Let's, uh, let's stick this thing. That's, that's 110 hertz. Let's go farther. If you can hear that, let me put my microphone on it. That is uh, 375 hertz. And uh, yeah, look at that waveform. Very, very clean. Very, very clean driving an inductive, uh, inductive load. So I've got the uh, uh, probes right on the motor too. So pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. I like it. Anyway, I think this thing's the winner.